All right, all right. Let's introduce ourselves. Would you like to go first? Uh, sure. Hi, I'm Dan Fan, and I'm a masochist. Some of you who are subscribed might already know that, yes, I read through and review a lot of garbage comics, but manga is also guilty of having garbage material that many of you have either steered away from or have been blessed to never even discover. But first, let me give you some background as to how I found this manga in particular. I personally have always had a fascination and interest in demons, angels, and other Christian-related fiction. And when I was first getting into anime, I would seek out a series based on topics or genres I was interested in, and they tended to not be filtered. So naturally, I stumbled upon Angel Sanctuary without really understanding the shit show that I was stepping into. But hey, can you really blame me for not knowing? I mean, Angel Sanctuary is a pretty cool title. Angel Sanctuary is a shoujo manga directed at young teen girls, despite its very adult themes and morally questionable conclusions. To my surprise, Viz Media actually does have a official English release of this. And you'll find out, oh, you'll find out exactly why I'm surprised that Viz Media wanted an English release of this particular manga here. Well, without further ado, let me get into the actual plot. I'm going to be summarizing best I can. The plot itself is very convoluted and longer than it needs to be, so trust me, you'll thank me for summarizing this. Well, our first intro into the series, we meet these two demons. There's Kurai, who looks like a child, and her trans companion, Arakune. Yay! And they're both also dark skin diversity, yay! Now, they're recovering the body of the angel Alexiel, but it's stated that the soul of Alexiel has been reincarnated into a human body, so they want to find that human, take the soul back, and resurrect Alexiel. And of course, you know who has that soul of the angel? Yes, it's our main character, Setsuna who is a young teenage guy, and he kind of has a little bit of a sister complex, as we find out going further into the series. Very protective of his little sister Sarah, who he's been separated from thanks to a divorce of the mother and father. So Sarah introduces Setsuna to her shy friend Ruri, and basically outs her as a psychic who can see auras. Yeah, I'm sure this will go into play later. Oh wait, no. Later at school, a stranger approaches Rory and gives her this video game called Angel Sanctuary. And this is a game that is like rumored to be the cause of deaths for many people who play it. Wow, cool gift, dude. So Setsuna is like, hey, why don't you just uh, just uh, back away from this strange guy? And Ruri kind of develops a crush on Setsuna. So she goes to Sarah and she's like, Hey, can you set me up with your brother? And Sarah re reluctantly agrees. Oh yeah, I know. I know how you'll get my brother to like you. Let's all hang out in a church. Yeah, guys love churches. Really gets them hard. They all meet up, but while an angel is trying to kill Setsuna, Rory accidentally gets hurt and realizes that because Setsuna didn't save her, that must mean that he doesn't like her. In fact, he doesn't like her so much that he would just let her literally die in front of him. So Rory ends up losing her eyesight. And while she is blind, she somehow like hears the voice of the angel sanctuary game speaking out to her and uh, she decides to, to do whatever the voice tells her to. Anyway, the next day, Setsuna is ripping up a DNA test that's revealing him and his sister, Sarah, are related by blood. Why does this upset him, you may ask? Welp, because Setsuna wants to bone his sister. Yep, that's right, we're going there. 
Strap in, shitlords, we're going on a ride! Setsuna has feelings for his sister Sarah, and he was hoping that they weren't related by blood, because then he could bone her. Kurai and Araku are, like, in the background of the story this whole time. They have one scene where they're, like, trying to murder Setsuna so they can awaken the soul of Alexiel, and uh, Setsuna threatens to sell them off to a gay bar if they ever come near him again. I don't think that's how gay bars work. But meanwhile, Rory starts using her angel video game and releases the angel Rossiel, who was sealed within there. Is some, some sort of angel crystal sealing magic that they put inside a video game, I guess. He gives her her eyesight back before absorbing her, her vague power into himself and then, like, possessing her. And Setsuna opens the door to Rory's room and then comes face to face with the angel who reveals himself to be Alexiel's brother, whom Alexiel had tried to kill. But then the vision of Rosiel is gone, and then we're just left with a very suspicious looking Rory who can just magically see again. Okay. On the way home, Setsuna and Sarah encounter some thugs who want to rape her. Ah, just a normal day in Japan. Sarah stops Setsuna before he kills the thugs, recalling a time when they were kids and an adult man tried to rape her. Wait a minute. Why is this girl always getting raped? Is this some sort of, like, female fantasy in Japan where you're, like, so pretty that all the guys just want to rape you? Anyway, he almost killed the adult in the flashback and made his mom scared of him because of how strong he was at such a young age. So Sarah doesn't want Setsuna to fight anymore in fear of them getting separated again by their parents? Um, it's kind of dumb. Hello, Setsuna, I'm your mother, and I'm very disappointed in you for protecting your sister from getting raped. You should have just let her get raped. Well, you're so bad. Of course, they kind of deserve to be separated in the first place, because he wants to fuck her. So while Rosiel kind of explains his backstory about how Alexiel rebelled against God and, and how he was sealed in this angel crystal in the video game, he also explains that God is currently in a deep slumber, which is probably why the world has gone to shit. And Rosiel wants to kill Alexiel, his sister, uh, not because he wants to avenge God, but because she didn't love him. Oh God. That's right, folks. This dude wants to fuck his sister, too. <laughs> we have two plot points that keep getting repeated. Rape and incest. That's all this manga has going for it. Rape and incest. Rape and incest. Just throw them in. It's more adult, right? Rape and incest are adult things. So if I just keep on putting more of it in my manga, it makes it more adult. I'm so edgy. So Rosiel uses Rory's body to convince Sarah to come with her to some vague party. And Sarah falls for it, hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, I got a feeling that Setsuna didn't fall in love with her for her smarts, guys. So Setsuna is going to save Sarah, where she's being held captive by a group of thugs controlled by Rosiel. The thugs are, of course, as you can imagine, threatening to rape her because the writer doesn't know how to write any drama besides those two plot points. Uh, Rosiel decides that the reason why Setsuna can't awaken Alexiel's soul is because he's too attached to his sister, Sarah. So Rosiel tries to kill Sarah and then like the image of Alexiel appears before them and it's so powerful. Ah, oh, so Rosiel pusses out and gets saved by his follower Katan while uh, Setsuna's wounds are met healed, it's almost like there are no stakes in any of these encounters whatsoever. So Karai and Arakune are like, yo, dude, we were totally just standing here the whole time doing nothing. Uh, did you know that you're the reincarnated soul of uh, Alexiel? And then Karai provides us with some backstory about how her home in Gehenna was destroyed thanks to the humans. And it's because, wait for it, fucking climate change. Yep, apparently we polluted so badly that the demon dimension got fucked up. Hey, maybe we should pollute more, guys. <laughs> Let's fuck up the demons by throwing our trash in the ocean. How did the demon dimension get fucked up, but our world is still functioning fine? 
Japan still standing, but Gehenna is like garbage city. To add to this ridiculous plot point, apparently angels also broke some sort of peace treaty and invaded the land to kill demons just because. So what was it? Was it the angels that fucked up Gehenna or was it pollution? Make up your mind, writer. Alexio was actually the one who saved Karai, wanted to create a world where there is no god or demons, no distinction between right or wrong, which actually sounds pretty fucked up. Karai was, as you can imagine, almost raped by angels. Just because, just because that's all the writer knows how to write. And Alexio saved Karai. Karai was in love with Alexio, but Alexio th didn't love her back. Alexio was uh, in love with somebody else. And if you know the two main plot points of this manga, I think you can guess who Alexio was in love with. So Sarah's passed out from their encounter and Setsuna puts her back into her bed. He's just staring at her while she sleeps, thinking about how much he loves his, his sister. He, he just goes in for the kiss. <laughs> Some guys like their girls thin, some guys like their girls curvy. Setsuna likes his girls unconscious. But after the kiss, he turns to find that his mother had been watching them this whole time. Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my actions. So after sexually assaulting his sister, his mother pulls him out of her bedroom and starts beating him, telling him they can't be together because it's incestuous and that he needs to leave her house immediately. Oh, but then Sarah wakes up and comes out of her room declaring she loves him too. Oh, well, I guess in that case, it's totally fine. Oh, wait, no, it's not. So in order not to hurt Sarah, Setsuna tells her that he hates her and, uh, and they both like run away crying. He then later is meeting up with his friend to talk about God and shit. And he, he's going on like this rant, explaining that like being gay, incestuous, committing adultery and fucking animals are all sins under God. Yep, we're just gonna lump all those people together. Being K is apparently the equivalent to wanting to fuck your sister, guys. How are all of these in this scene shown as being exactly the same? And Setsuna is going on about how like cruel it is. Oh man, God set up all these like rules for sex. Ew, that's stupid. There should just be no rules. <laughs> so then Rosiel in uh, Ruri's body is like visiting Sarah again to bitch about how jealous he is of her for being able to seduce his sister's reincarnation. Wow, what a spicy love triangle. Which one will Setsuna choose? His sister or his brother? So Sarah decides that she's gonna go like confess to her brother again. Like maybe he'll change his mind this time. And Setsuna meets up with Sarah and she demands that he kisses her again while she's awake this time. And he's like, yeah, sure. I see no issue with this. But as it turns out, it's not Sarah, it's Rosia. Oh no, it wasn't his sister, it was his brother. That's messed up, I guess. I mean, it, I mean, it would have still been messed up even if it was Sarah, but... <laughs> so Rosio was trying to assimilate Setsuna, but his plan was foiled again. And, and so he leaves. This guy really sucks. <laughs> this guy really sucks at, like, doing anything in this series. He always just like tries something and then fucking nopes out last minute. It's like a fucking Saturday morning cartoon. I'll get you next time, Spider-Man! So then the friend character uh, took a snapshot of him kissing Sarah that wasn't actually Sarah, it was Rosiel, but he ends up like putting those pictures up in the school. And this is supposed to be some dramatic scene where <laughs> he like spreads this information around the school specifically so he can get Setsuna to admit his true feelings that he really does love his sister and he's like trying to convince Setsuna that it's okay to love his sister what meanwhile Sarah is like going to church with her mother to talk about her incest problem but Sarah like decides she'd rather go to hell than not fuck her brother 
priorities, ladies and gentlemen. Because feelings, it's okay. It's okay to be immoral because of feelings, guys. Oh, the good lesson here, manga. And look, I could break down chapter by chapter if I really had to, but there's over 100 chapters of this thing. So let me just break it down how this manga series ends. The big conclusion is that the main characters team up with Lucifer to defeat God. Alexiel, yes, turns out to be in love with her brother as well, and kills him before absorbing him into her womb, uh, and giving his powers to Setsuna. Setsuna gets to fuck his sister and have mutant incest babies that wish for death every day they wake up and breathe. Ah, so this is what a Satanist considers to be a happy ending. Thanks. I hate it. So the writer did get some criticism for essentially making a pro-incest manga. I didn't even realize at first, but this is actually the same writer of Beauty and the Beast of Paradise Lost, which I reviewed as being very bland. But at least it was an angel sanctuary, right? Then I saw... Oh no. She's making a sequel to Angel Sanctuary. Dear fucking god, she's making more of this shit as we speak. So it's not even like she learned her lesson and that she's not gonna make any more weird degenerate manga anymore. She is actively continuing this series now. Hey everyone, it's Dan Fen from the future here, and I just had to talk about this one Angel Sanctuary review that I found, written by a lefty anarchist who is pansexual, polyamorous, gray, aromantic, polygender, NB, they, them, whatever, expect a great deal of Deadpool bad jokes, some social justice reblogging, and very little original content. The fact that Setsuna has a romance with his sister does not bother the poster at all. That is, that's actually not the reason why they have so many complaints about this manga. In fact, they even go as far to say that they don't believe there is a moral problem with incest. Uh, it's all good. However, the actual problem that they have with the manga is gender and consent issues. Yes, that's right. Because Setsuna used slurs and disrespects Kurai and Arakune's genders. In other words, he was a big meanie. Oh no. Yeah, never mind that he's fucking his sister. No, what really matters is words. Words are so much more serious than incest. I have literally heard modern day speakers argue in favor of incest simply because Hitler was against it. And Hitler bad, therefore incest good. It's fucking stupid, and so is this manga series. Sorry, sorry, this, this is getting a little bit depressing for a manga review. We're getting a little bit heavy here, but you get my point. Angel Sanctuary is garbage, and I feel bad for people who grew up with this because despite its very porn-like plot, this was not porn. This was aimed at teenage girls, as though this was a normal romance for teenage girls to fawn over. And it's not even really that different from the shit that I've seen on Webtoon in modern day. It really does show you that you kind if we kind of have to stand up against this stuff before it gets too fucking out of hand. I don't want to see any more angel sanctuaries out there, but they do exist. And if you would like me to review more far left manga like this, let me know. And that's about all I got to say about this series. Uh, stay away from it. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave your like and your own thoughts in the comment section below. If you'd like to check out something a little bit more, uh, normal, <laughs> feel free to go on BurningStarComics.net where I have some of my comics up along with some comics from some other indie creators. And for those of you who'd like to submit to the website, no incest please. Thank you. You can also join the fan club to get sneak peeks of said comics as they come out. It's a good way to support and keep the website running as it is, as well as support me creating more comics. But for now, I'll see you next time, everyone. Bye!